Hi guys, my name is James Wise. I'm at Bolton Capital. So you sort of had quite a full range of the ecosystem of venture funding, although where C4 comes into this, I don't quite know yet because they're here to blow us up. But we're sort of the latter stage of the venture funding industry. So we're classic Series A and above. Um, but that is really changing quite a lot. And so I'm going to give you just a couple of minutes on Boulderton, a bit of our background, uh, a couple of minutes on me. And then, if useful, start to explain a little bit about what we're seeing in venture as a whole for those of you starting out now, uh, although we may not be relevant. On average, we know people about two and a half years before we actually invest. So we like to meet you now and then hopefully be useful at a later stage. Uh, and also maybe a little bit about what we're seeing in hardware. And we've been around about 15 years. So we've seen the evolution of hardware and made all the mistakes uh, in the book in that process. Uh, so back in the early noughties, we were investors uh, in software, but we were also investors in green tech. So we made lots of terrible investments in that space. Uh, one or two successful ones, we backed Yingli, uh, which is a big uh, solar energy company, uh, which went pretty well, um, but also lots and lots of missed opportunities. Um, in the mid noughties, just as things were getting slightly more interesting for hardware, we invested in a company called OnCommune, uh, which is a blood diagnostics tool. So uh, it's in hospitals, it's for clinical use, uh, but it was a, a, a university spin out that had a new type of technology, managed to get a bit of traction. Uh, and once again, it's been quite successful, but it's been a six or seven year journey. And now they're starting to get into the, the clinical ecosystem and do really, really well. But that's an expensive, long, painful process. And the most recent hardware investment we made was Roly. Roly is a consumer facing uh, new type of uh, musical instruments as a whole, but in particular, the first entry is the piano. So disrupting an industry which has been around for about 400 years, hasn't really changed much in the last 100 years. Since the electric keyboard you know, 30 years ago is the last time anyone really managed to buy or sell pianos effectively. Uh, and so they, this is the new type of hardware startup. They are innovative, they're branded, they uh, have different ways of creating and distributing their product. Um, and it's sort of that angle and that end of things that maybe I'll talk a little bit about today. Uh, but to understand a little bit, we uh, are, I think, the largest European-focused European venture fund, although there's a new one every day, so that may change. Um, we are a group of operators and uh, financiers. So within our eight-person investing team now, uh, we have two partners who've built billion-dollar-plus companies, uh, Saranga, who built Blinks, uh, Bernard Lieto, who built Business Objects. Um, Bernard's on the board of, of Stanford. Uh, Saranga works with a huge number of, of World Economic Forum uh, sort of outreach programs. Um, but we also have people who've just spent their entire life uh, building and selling companies at the very top end, people who've IPO'd 30, 40 companies, uh, people who've invested for the last 25 years. And so we have a kind of mix of background. And to be honest with you, when you get to the stage that we really work out, that mix becomes relatively important because eventually you're going to have to deal with someone who really does annoyingly care about EBITDA, the really boring people in the corner, and we'd like to think we can do a bit of, bit of the hard work there rather than uh, have any of you guys do it. So our average check size is a bit of a misnomer because while officially we say it's $5 million, last year we did everything between $20 million and about half a million dollars. Uh, and the range of that is partly because of the need of the companies we work with and the fact that some of our companies require follow-on capital, but also it's because in venture, no matter what stage you say you're at or what sector you say you're interested in, a great person and a great team will always change your mind. I think that's the, the underlying thing here and the most annoying thing here for all of you. The number one thing that we care about, and I presume the number one thing that most VCs still care about, is the passion and expertise of the person and the team they're working with. Because on average, while we've known people for about two and a half years before we've actually invested in them, once we've invested, we will know them possibly for another seven to eight years on average. We will be working with that person on a regular basis seven to eight years. That's the, the length of time that we normally have to be in a working relationship with someone, which is a really long time if you don't like them. So we try and do a lot of DD on, on the person and the team and making sure that they're the right people to do it. So we're not experts in anything. 90% of the deals that we do are in software, but in that space, I personally have led deals and investments and sit on the board of companies uh, in 3D printing space, in the AR, VR space, two uh, companies in the, in the dev tool space, uh, mobile productivity tools like City Mapper and Sunrise, which some of you may uh, use, uh, and then loads of tools you've never heard of, like Upbeat and Cloud9 ID, which are you know, rather abstract developer tools. So it's quite a broad range. And the reason why we feel we can get away with that, which is quite bizarre that you can say you know anything about any of those sectors, is because we like to think we know about people. And that's the number one thing we look for. And interestingly enough, that's something that's true across the hardware and the software space, and you know, has always been true. We've always backed great people. Now, the reason why we're increasingly finding hardware interesting is actually rather, I think, counter to what some people have said to date. 
Uh, so big things have changed in hardware. First of all, funding, right? Funding has become far more uh, accessible uh, for hardware companies, and that's great. And funding is a really, really useful thing to have, but great companies aren't built off funding. Funding is like taking a gun to a knife fight, but ultimately, if you want to be in the fight, it should not be because you can get funding. So the second thing is things like platforms like Indiegogo, which I love and adore wherever the representative is there. And uh, I work with a company called Crowdcube, which is slightly different, you know, equity investing, a um, bit further down the line. But similarly, the best um, pitches we see on Crowdcube are people building really innovative uh, physical products. But ultimately, proto fast prototyping and learnings from that, while incredibly, incredibly useful, is like bringing a bazooka to a knife fight. Right? You've got the extra firepower, but you don't really need it to be in the fight. The reasons why you should be building, a, a, or at least aspiring to build a hardware company, is because you believe you have a significant and long-term advantage over whatever else is out there today. And to be honest, those things should be relatively similar between software and hardware. So one of those things, as I mentioned already, is team and expertise. And you need to have a passionate team who feel they have an insight or expertise which give them insight into a market which uh, is currently nascent or so large but, but completely misread. So that's the key thing. That's a core thing. Um, but just like software, you also need to look at other ways that you have scalable advantages. So one of those things may be distribution. And hardware certainly is finding new ways to to expand, new ways to distribute product, and platforms like Indiegogo give you the opportunity to do that. Obviously, the web and mobile give you a huge uh, new range of ways to do that. You no longer have to go into every store. You no longer have to hire a, a shop in Selfridges for uh, you know, years to get your, your product off the ground. Uh, you can do that direct with customers. So distribution, in the same way that software is now easier to sell online thanks to mobile app stores and, and thanks to sort of, uh, cloud-based services, hardware is getting easier as well. Uh, supply. Uh, obviously, supply now in the software world has completely changed. You could build something with you know one one or two people and uh, an AWS account, and it's getting there with hardware. It's still a lot harder than software, but the emergence of big platforms like uh, you know PCH and people in that space, the emergence of uh, lots of open source and, and free materials uh, to help you find and, and build and deliver products. Uh, and then networks, and one of the companies I work is called 3D Hubs. Networks like 3D Hubs, which is a platform uh, for distributed 3D printing, for example. It's just one example of many platforms in that space which can help you build and test stuff. Um, then there's always the technology breakthrough. So what is it that's really innovative in software companies? Often it's because they've got a new type of tech that makes it slightly faster to deploy or slightly easier to find. And I think that technological breakthrough has to also exist in your hardware startup. You have to have something that's just slightly different, slightly more advanced, slightly smaller, slightly faster, slightly cheaper, slightly less any energy demanding or, or you know, a nuance in design, uh, which gives you the same edge that a great developer or a great new piece of software would have. Uh, and then the number one thing that I think the hardware industry has in spades, which the software industry takes huge advantage of, is that you have very large, slow-moving, and very uninspiring giants in the space. And one of the reasons why we really liked Roly was we looked at what happened in the major piano producers over the last 30, 40, even 100 years, and they'd done nothing. Other than the electric keyboard, there really hadn't been a major breakthrough. And we looked at the uh, financing structures within these large companies, and we looked at their uh, procurement routes, and we looked at the huge levels of management they have for what is effectively a you know, hardware company, and we thought, well, a incumbent can take all of that out. And it's the same in software, right? People look now, even at the older software giants like Microsoft, and say, we can take out huge chunks of your business. And for all of you, you should be looking at, if you're building a, a new hardware product, looking at the incumbents and saying, we are better than you in these three ways. We are more scalable than you in these three ways. And we can take out these chunks of cost in these ways. And this is the long-term competitive advantage we have. Because funding is not a competitive advantage. Prototyping is not a competitive advantage in the long run. The long run competitive advantage is those kind of scalable opportunities. So whenever pitching hardware startups, especially at least to me, um, I would recommend really, really focusing on what is the scalable advantage, the long-term competitive advantage that you are building here. And it can't just be we had a really great Kickstarter campaign, although that is incredibly important. It has to be something bigger than that. So we have backed a few hardware companies. We're looking to do a lot more. Uh, similarly, if you'd like to talk to any of us, uh, we take meetings, whether you're you know, just out of university or, or, or beforehand, uh, or you're far down the line. Uh, with the product and you have sales because we like to meet exceptional people. Realistically, we normally invest post-product launch, uh, early sales, 
uh, and into people who have a very clear vision of where the company is going because we can give you the capital and, and hopefully the support to build a large organization uh, and hopefully you know, if you can't get a, an invite to Stefan, um, I can introduce you to him as well. Uh, so come to me first and I'll pass you over. Thanks very much.